On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a beautiful spring wreath using all Walmart flowers. Keep watching. Hello everyone, I am Ramon. Welcome back to Ramon at Home. I'm so excited you're here today because I'm gonna show you how to create a gorgeous spring wreath for your front door all done with Walmart flowers. I cannot wait to show you, but before we start, I want to invite you that if you are new, please consider subscribing. If you already subscribed, don't forget to turn the notification bell on so you're notified every time I do a new upload. And if you recreate any of your Ramona Home Inspire looks, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and tag me in your photos so I can share them with everybody to see. The information will be down below. Before I give you guys the list of all the things that you're going to need, I wanna show you the difference between Dollar Tree flowers and Walmart flowers. Let's go to the Dollar Tree. All right, you guys, so I want to show you, these are the roses here at the Dollar Store. And as you guys can see, they are very thin and very, you can actually see through them if you pay attention. So this is their orange rose. And they have some pink ones over here in the fuchsia and the soft. And then also they have these two tone ones. But they are, I mean, they are a dollar and you do get what you pay for. But what I'm trying to say is if you go to Walmart and you spend the extra 47 cents, I'm going to show you what their flowers look like. The other thing I'm like not liking how they're doing it this year is like how gem packed the flowers are. You can really not see what's what. And I don't know if it's just my local dollar store and I've been a few and they've always been so gem packed to where Walmart, they have them really organized and then you can pick whatever you like. They have this one. I guess this one is not so bad. But it's still like, if you guys see, they're all like wrinkled and just not very well packaged when they ship them out all right i do want to mention that i did find these lavender bushes and these are really really pretty as you guys can see it has the tips they're made out of silicone and then the flower there is made out of silk so this lavender for a dollar is not that bad of an investment all right now that you have seen the flowers at the dollar tree i want to show you the difference let's go to walmart All right, you guys, so I just want to point out how beautiful the florals here at Walmart are and they're displayed absolutely beautifully. And this is one of my favorite ones they have. It's this bush of ranuncula and it comes in this bush. It's about $4, but look at the quality of the flowers compared to the ones at DT. The reason why I like this ranuncula is because it has um, more like a fuller look and you get about two, four, six flowers per bush. So if you do the math versus the quality, it really is worth your money. I just want to show you how this uh, limbs ear really goes fast. The last time I was here, there was a whole section of it. And now there's just a little bit of it. So I think I'm going to take it off because we'll need it later. So overall, I really do like the way they display them better. The quality is much greater. And I really, for 47 cents more, I really do think they are worth your penny. As you might have noticed, the price difference is only a few cents and it really does make a difference. I have been creating wreaths for a long time, over 10 years now, and I can tell you the quality of the flowers is the most important thing, second to the placement. So now that we know how important the quality of the flowers is, let me give you the list of the items we're going to need for this wreath. We're gonna start with two stems of the beautiful salmon peonies, one bush of the gorgeous ranunculus, we're gonna use two bushes of the white lilac. We are going to use three bushes of the fox hollow. We're also going to use four pearl hydrangea. And from the dollar store, we're gonna use two bushes of the Luxpur in purple. For our greenery, I'm gonna use two stems of the lamb's ear, one bush of eucalyptus, and I'm also going to use a variety of leftover greenery that I already have for our base. For our tools, I'm gonna use my wire cutters. And a lot of you guys have asked where I got these wire cutters because they do cut like butter. These are the DeWalt from Home Depot. And these are some also some amazing scissors that came from Walmart. 
On this occasion, I'm gonna use my hot glue pan, and this is a really good alternative, but you could also use your hot glue gun, and the only difference that I like is that when I make reeds, I really do think that these work better because the pellets actually have glue in it to where the hot glue gun, it's only silicone. So I'm gonna leave all the information on this guy right here on the description box if you are interested. And if you have any questions, leave them in the commentary section below. All right, you guys, it's time to get started. Okay, so to begin our beautiful spring wreath, I just want to mention the very first thing we're going to do is going to green our recycle. I don't know if you guys can see, but this still has glue from other uh, projects that I did. And what I like to do is just save the project and then take it apart and reuse it. That is a way that you can save yourself a few dollars. But if you don't have one of these forms, then they're only about $7.00 and it really is an investment. You can find them at Walmart, you can find them at your local craft store. But what I want to mention is the very first thing we're going to do is green it. And I like to use a recycled greenery. We're also gonna use some brand new greenery, but to give it a lot of depth and so you can save yourself some money. Instead of uh, using all new greenery, what you need to do is just start with all greenery because you're not even going to see it. So what you do is you, first of all, dip your stem into your glue and it is very important that you know that what you need to do when you're creating a fabulous uh, spring wreath is that you need to go all the way the same direction. You cannot start putting greeneries that way and then this way because then it doesn't really look balanced. So this is a really good way to balance it. And then the other thing is that you want to start with a longer piece on the top and then you want to mimic whatever is going up on the top. You wanna to go and do it on the bottom. And as you guys can see, just by inserting this right here is gonna give it that radiating motion. Think of a clock and how it goes counterclockwise or clockwise. Well, we want this to go clockwise and you have to insert every single piece of greenery going clockwise. That way it's very balanced. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all of this um, greenery that is our recycled greenery and I'm gonna come back with you and show you the next step, which will be our lamps here. All right, so I have uh, started with some of my older greenery or recycled greenery. And as you guys can see, it is just to cover the base of our wreath and also is going to give it a lot of texture. I'm going to go ahead and go in with this beautiful eucalyptus from Walmart. This bush, you guys, is only $2. And I swear I have purchased every single bush that they, they had at the store. The same with the lamps or the, uh, the lamps ear because it is such a good, quality product for only two dollars but we're gonna go in with that one next uh, i just want to go ahead and make sure that you know to just cut them all at once that way you save you save a little bit of uh, time and then also that i always like to go in with one greenery at a time and what this is going to do not only fill in on the spots but it's going to give it that beautiful texture that we're going for now if you might be wondering why am i gluing this time because a lot of times i don't glue on my wreath just to recycle materials well, I'm gonna give this wreath to my mom along with the centerpiece to match. If you guys have not seen the centerpiece that we did on our last video, I really recommend you watch it. It was absolutely stunning and it really is the inspiration for this wreath. Once again, I'm going to mention, make sure that you go clockwise all the time. It doesn't matter what greenery you're inserting, what flower you're inserting, do never deviate from that rule and your wreaths will be perfectly um, balance. Now here's the other thing I want to mention and this is very important you know you want to make sure that you insert your greenery not only going clockwise but then also you go in and out. Kind of the rule of uh, floral design of what goes up must come down. You do some in and then you do some down and that way is going to really help give it dimension. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert some of this perhaps right here on the bottom and always following that shape like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and insert some over here. Like I said, this is to give it a lot of dimension on your wreath. Now I want to mention this glue you guys are seeing me um, uh, use this time. Actually, it's a glue-based glue. The ones that you use on your hot glue gun, they're silicone based and there is no adhesive on it. But on this particular, uh, pellet glue that you guys are seeing me use, it actually has glue in it. So that's why it helps it stay longer and uh, you can put it outside and you don't have to worry about 
the weather or anything like that. All right, so now I'm gonna go in with my lamb's ear and I'm gonna cut them a little bit short because I want them to be tucked in. Uh, and the reason why you want your greenery to be tucked in is to kind of help you cover that form. And I'm gonna go ahead and just dip it really good. And I'm gonna go ahead with one right here. Oh, I love lamb's ear, you guys. I'm so in love with it. And I was actually telling the lady at Walmart when I was checking out, because I had so much of it, and she's like, what are you using this for? It's like, well, I make videos on YouTube and I'm showing how to do floral design and wreaths and things like that. She's like, you know, we cannot keep that in stock. I said, I know, because everybody wants it. It's so affordable. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep inserting some of these lamps here. I'm gonna go ahead right here. I'm gonna put one right here on the bottom. As you guys can see, you don't need much of it. Remember, it's just an accent at this point. And this is looking so pretty with all these greens. Look at that, how gorgeous. All right, we're going to start with our flowers. Let me get them ready and I'll be right back with you. Okay, I don't know if you remember last week, I gave you some information about focal flower and accent flower. In this uh, particular wreath, we're gonna go ahead and insert our focal flowers first. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna link up that video right now. It's the matching centerpiece and you can watch it. It really is gem packed with floral information for centerpieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put my hydrangeas, remember, all the way down because they are also part of our filler uh, that is helping us hide that form. So I'm gonna use four this particular time. And I'm gonna go ahead and just basically do one on the top, one on the side, one on the bottom, one on the left side. So, and make sure that you tuck them in really good, but the secret here is to also go in. Instead of just out, look how this one says out, like in, out, in, out. And that's very important to know also to have a balanced wreath. So this one needs to go out like that. Perfect, I love the way this looks. And then we're going to come in with our next focal flower, which will be this peony from Walmart. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut them all. I want them to be a little longer. So I'm not gonna cut them as short because at this point, what you need to do is the larger flower needs to be closer to the form. The medium sized flower needs to be a little further up from your, uh, from your cover flower. And then your accent flower are your flyaways. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert, and I don't know if you remember also in that video, I told you that we work in sets of twos, threes, and ones. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and do one facing outwards, and then I'm going to do one facing inwards, but there's going to be a set of two on the same spot. You see how one is facing north, the other one's facing west? And then I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna skip the hydrangea, and then I'm going to go in, make sure that you always give them a little bend, especially if they are short. I'm gonna go inside like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go right here with just one. Thumbs up if you guys are enjoying this spring series. I'm having so much fun showing you guys a few tricks of the trade. Um, I don't know if you know, but I have done floral design for over 10 years and I really enjoy it. So now there's two right here. I have another bush right here. So I'm gonna cut them all at once. And that way it saves us time. And I really do love the Walmart flowers this year. Um, I know a lot of you are like, well, they went up to 47 cents, but you do have to look at the quality, you guys. They are really, really good. They're stepping up the game. And I think that it really does make all the difference. All right, so I have one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and insert one more right here. And just make sure they really goes on the uh, form. And I'm gonna do that a set of three. So I'm gonna cut one more medium size. And the reason why we wanna do sets of twos, threes, and ones is because it really does make a focal point. See how you can see two right here, then three right here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do another set of two right here. And it just is looking so beautiful. I really hope my mother will love it. She really loved the centerpiece, and I told her 
I will give it to her and I will make her the matching wreath for her to have. This one didn't go in. Sometimes you have to go in and move the flowers around so that way you can really make sure that it, there you go, that it goes in the form. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and insert yet another one right here, like that. And also remember to keep keep remembering like in and out. What I mean is like in and out, in and out, in and out. That way your wreath is balanced. You guys, these flowers were only 147. Oh, they're so gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and insert one right here, going down like that. So it kind of goes all the way around. Then I'm gonna bring my next focal flower, which will be this gorgeous ranuncula, which it probably has to be my favorite, along with the orange one that you guys saw earlier. And I cannot wait to go get some of those and make some projects with them. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. I'm only gonna use a few as an accent. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut them a little shorter. And then I'm gonna give him a little bend to make it more real-like, more lifelike. And I'm just gonna use this as an accent. So I'm gonna probably use four little bundles. I'm gonna add one up here. And as you guys can see, just by giving him that little bend, it really makes him look more realistic. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add one going down right here. This would also be so beautiful for a wedding. I love this. I love this look for a wedding, these really soft pastel colors. They're so beautiful. All right, and following the rule of what goes up must come down, but because I insert this way, then I wanna make sure that this guy follows that motion. So I'm gonna insert going the opposite way. And I'm gonna open right here to find my form. And I'm gonna push it in like that. Oh, so beautiful. Then I'm, I have one more. If you guys are really enjoying these videos, I really would appreciate if you help me share them with a friend. You can tag them on Facebook or you can just send them as an email. I would really like for everybody to know and come and learn some techniques on interior design and floral design and seasonal decorating. All right, so far so good, but I do feel like I need another one here. So I'm gonna bring my little bush and I'm gonna cut another one. And let's see. Sometimes you have to step back and go look at see what it looks like. So you can continue. Let me see. I feel like it needs it right here. Perfect. Oh my goodness, that is so gorgeous. But what really is going to give it life is going to be this Larkspur that I found actually at the dollar store. And that was about the only flower that I thought it was better quality than Walmart. It is so pretty, it is so lifelike. I'm gonna cut them all at once, like this. And then I'm gonna do, is, these ones you insert by themselves because they are your flyaways. Just gonna start inserting. Look what that does, it just really helps it set up a beautiful color scheme. And because I went down, I went down on that one, what I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and go up on the same spot. And look at that, so beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one a little shorter. And then I'm gonna go ahead, because I went up, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And because I went up, now I'm gonna go down with another one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do this on the four corners, what we call the four corners on uh, wreath making our top, bottom, left and right. So I'm basically just gonna go ahead and repeat the motion that I have done. First I go in like this and then I'm gonna go out with it. Okay, at this point I need my other little bush. And you guys, when I went to the dollar store, this was really literally the last one they had. So now I have to go to my other um, local dollar stores and look for more because there's more projects that I want to show you using the same color scheme. That way you can have a cohesive home. But let me show you what I mean by, by this. I went in, so now I want to go out with it. 
and just make sure that you really insert that. See what I'm saying? It really is creating. Once I put the other one here, it'll be all the way around your reef. I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on my stem. I'm gonna open up a spot right here and I'm gonna go in first like this. Make sure it goes in the form and then I'm gonna go out with it. But this one is to go a little shorter. Thumbs up if you guys are enjoying. I cannot wait to read your comments. If you're learning something, be sure to let me know. See how you had flowers all the way around. Now, my favorite one is this Fox Hollow, and that's what's really going to take this wreath over the top, and I cannot wait to show you. All right, you guys, so I went ahead and cut two of the bundles of the Fox Hollow in purple, and I'm just gonna go have them here in my hand because it is faster that way, especially with these daintier flowers. And I am going to repeat what I did with the, uh, with the lock spur, but I'm gonna go find places where there is no flowers, like between, between the lock spurs, that's where I'm gonna put my Fox Hollow. That way it gives it a more full look. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this right here. And as you guys can see, by separating them going up and down, it really gives it a lot of dimension. Um, so I'm gonna continue to do this right here. And I love these little flyaway dainty flowers because no flower arrangement is completed unless you have that really sweet touch. And the good thing about this is because they're wired so you can really manipulate them and make them go the way you want it to go. And so I'm gonna go ahead and insert one right here. And I'm gonna go insert one going out to balance it out right here. This is so gorgeous, you guys. This is probably my favorite wreath that I have ever made. I'm making it with so much love for my mom and I know she's going to love it. And the fact that it matches the centerpiece so well is just having a really beautiful, cohesive look in your home this spring. And that is my main goal for this spring season is to have a really cohesive look on our homes. All right, I have two more left. Go ahead and insert right there. And I feel like I need one right here. If you guys have any questions and need answered, please feel free to leave them to me on the comment section below. This is uh, what it looks like. I was going to add this white lilac, but because we have the white hydrangea, I feel like we really don't need it. So this is what the wreath looks like. I'm gonna put it in the door and I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like all ready for spring. As you guys can see, creating a gorgeous wreath with warmer flowers is super easy if you just follow the few instructions that I gave you. I really hope that you have found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a comment down below and let me know what was your favorite part of this wreath and if you have seen the centerpiece, the match. Also, leave me the hashtag lantern on the comment section below if you guys want to see the matching lanterns for spring. I'm super excited to continue with the spring season. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram for daily updates and Insta stories. The information will be on the description box. That's all I have for today. If you guys have not seen the centerpiece, I'm gonna link it up. And if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and do not forget to turn the notification on to all notifications so you are notified every time they upload a new video. You can watch more videos right now and until next week, goodbye.